Good morning, Chameleon Wranglers. This is Bill Strand, and today we're going to be talking about getting started with Jackson's Chameleons, and we're going to specifically go over getting your first Jackson's Chameleon. Jackson's chameleons are perhaps one of the most iconic of chameleons with their three horns. They've invoked visions of triceratops and those of us who have loved dinosaurs since we're kids have loved the Jackson's chameleon. Now the first thing to know when you're looking at a Jackson's chameleon is that Jackson's chameleons are actually three different subspecies. You have the yellow crested or the Triocerus jacksoni xanthalophus. You have the Machacos Hills Jackson's chameleon or the Triocerus jacksoni jacksoni, and then there's the smaller Mount Maru Jackson's chameleon, Triocerus jacksoni marimontanus. Now the most common one that we see is the yellow crested, what uh, we affectionately call the xanths, after xanthalophus, which means yellow crested. Nice how that works. This is where the uh, we have the large green males with the very impressive three horns and the females are large and green with no horns. This subspecies originates from Kenya, but a number of the uh, specimens that we see in the pet trade are from Hawaiian origin and they, they ended up in Hawaii as a mistake. They were imported to a pet store, they escaped, and uh, then they populated Hawaii. And so a lot of what you see comes from the Hawaiian bloodlines. The Xanthalophus is the chameleon that most people think of when they say Jackson's chameleon. And when you hear the phrase, oh, the males have the horns and the females don't, they're talking about the Xanthalophus subspecies. And here's where things get a little interesting, because the other subspecies that we see often is the Machacos Hills Jackson's chameleon. The interesting thing about this one is both the males and the females can have three horns. This, you can see, is where we might get into trouble if you're talking to somebody who only knows about the Xanthalophus and thinks that every chameleon with the three horns is a male. Why is this tricky? Well, we'll get into that. The third subspecies, the Mount Maru Jackson's chameleon, is from Tanzania. And that one isn't coming in anymore, and so it's likely that you'll not run into that one. So we're going to focus on the other two. Now, I mentioned that it could get kind of uh, interesting with the females of the Machacos Hills Jackson's chameleons having three horns. And the reason this is, is because Jackson's chameleons are live-bearing chameleons, which means they don't lay eggs. The babies develop within the mother, and she gives live birth. And this has caused many surprises in the Jackson's chameleon community because people get one female chameleon and one or two years later, they come down the stairs and all of a sudden their cage is filled with 30 babies. What happened? Well, Jackson's chameleons, females, they mate once and they can impregnate themselves multiple times through their lives. And so this is where the surprise comes from. Now, going back to that Machacos Hills Jackson's chameleon, what if you go to a pet store and you buy a male and it's given to you as a male because he has three horns. Well, what if that happens to be a female, Machacos Hills Jackson's chameleon, and babies are in your future? So it is important to be able to tell the difference between the subspecies, and you can't rely on the pet store person or even the vendor at a reptile show to know the difference. And so here is a, uh, a comparison between uh, males and females. You notice with the uh, the xanthalophus, it's quite easy. As adults, there's really no confusion. With the Machacos Hills, here's a male. And here are a number of females. And you can see how some of them, you can tell by the horns. The horns are smaller. Uh, the ones above the eyes are smaller. Uh, and, but some of them have very strong horns. And so it takes a practiced eye to really be able to tell the difference. And so sometimes you have to go to experts, and if you have questions, then you can go to the Jackson's Chameleon Community on Facebook. That's a Facebook group that I founded. And the admin team consists of people that have and breed Jackson's Chameleons, and so they know what they're talking about. You can get some help there. So if you wanted to get a Jackson's Chameleon, 
what subspecies, what gender would you get? The good news is that all of them make great pets. Obviously, the males are very impressive with their horns. Uh, the female Xanthalophus is, is one of the most soulful chameleons. I've loved my female Xanthalophuses. They've had such a calm personality. And of all the chameleons, if you told me that you had a chameleon that would sit on your hand and eat while sitting on your hand, I'd guess that it was a female Xanthalophus. Uh, the the Machacos Hills, obviously the males a little bit smaller but very colorful, and the females have different patterns and they have the horns as well and so you really can't go wrong with any gender or any subspecies of Jackson's chameleons and they're all taken care of the same so it's really a personal preference of yours. Now let's talk about that special consideration of babies. Any female that has ever been with a male has the probability that they will have babies sometime in their life. If you get a wild-caught Jackson's chameleon female, just assume that you are going to have babies. The issue of having babies may make you hesitate to get a female Jackson's chameleon, and this is appropriate if you're not ready to take that next step of chameleon keeping and taking care of babies. Some of you may be excited at the idea of having Jackson's chameleon babies because you think it'll be an incredible experience, and the truth is, it is. It's an amazing experience, and uh, it's, I love it. It's new to me every time I do it. But it takes time, money, space to do it right. And here's the problem. If you don't do it right, then it's not an amazing experience. It's a heartbreaking experience because the babies pass away, and that's not a good memory at all. So you need to be ready to take care of babies before you take that on. Now, I've created a number of resources so you can know how to take care of babies. And so take a look at those and see if that's something that you would like to do before you take this on. Taking care of babies isn't that hard as long as you're prepared. If you're prepared, it is that amazing experience. If you're not prepared, well, <laughs> then it's that panic experience. So do your research into it. Don't cut corners and go into it eyes wide open. Now, if you're looking to get a Jackson's Chameleon, my number one suggestion will surprise no one, and that's to go with a reputable breeder who's going to give you a well-started four-month-old juvenile that you can grow up with. Now, go into this realizing that the price at a breeder is going to be more expensive than if you went to one of these larger retailers, but you're going to be getting a much better chameleon to start off with. It's 100% worth it. Now, when you get plugged into the community and you hear us breeders talking, we talk about sending babies out at the earliest four months old, which is a lot longer than you would for a veiled chameleon or a panther chameleon. The reason is, is because baby Jackson's chameleons tend to be a little more sensitive and we want to make sure that we only send well-started juveniles. So let's get down to brass tacks about actually finding a Jackson's Chameleon. Obviously, number one way to do it is to find a breeder. This can be tricky, but if you go on Facebook to the, a group that I started, the Jackson's Chameleon Community, that's where you're going to find breeders of Jackson's Chameleons, both the Xanthalophus and the Machacos Hills Jackson's Chameleon. One thing to look out for if you want to go with the Xanthalophus or Yellow Crested Jackson's Chameleon is that you can get bloodlines that are from Hawaii or from Kenya. If you're just looking for a pet, it really doesn't matter which one you get, but a serious breeder will be working with the Kenyan bloodlines. They're more difficult to get a hold of, uh, but the bloodline is stronger. Now, I acknowledge that many buyers of Jackson's Chameleons uh, get them from a pet store, a reptile expo, or they're looking online. And so, I need to go over a number of cautions uh, if you're going to be doing this. First of all, beware of companies selling young babies. And on that Facebook group that I told you about, we spend an enormous amount of our time helping keepers try to save the life of their baby chameleon that's sick. And the problem is it was sent too young. And what's going on is these large establishments 
They bring in a female, the female has babies, and they want to get that baby out as soon as possible because the longer you keep a baby, the more money it eats, literally. So unsuspecting keepers get babies that are much too young to be sent out, and they end up dying. Of course, the new keepers are not to blame. How would they know to look out for anything? They, they, they're looking at this uh, cheap price. Hey, I'm getting a good deal, and so they go for it. We need to talk about cheap price. When you buy an animal, cheap is not good because the price reflects the kind of care the animal got. When you look at a breeder's price, it could be $150 to $200 depending upon when they're sending out the chameleon. And then you look at an online store, it's $50. <laughs> why not save some money? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the breeder has spent a year before taking care of the female. So the female has gotten the best of nutrition. Once the babies are born, those are given the best of nutrition for four months. And so you're talking about a year and a half investment into each baby. And that care just simply is not there when you're buying a $50 baby from an online retailer. Now I'm not saying all retailers are bad. There may be some that are taking care of their babies, but they're not gonna be able to do it and sell them to you for $50. So if you're getting any chameleon for less than $150, be suspicious. And I gotta reiterate, do not price shop when it comes to animals. Quality shop. It makes all the difference in the world. Getting a good deal doesn't do you any good if the animal dies. And this isn't a joke. We have people coming to the breeders and saying, oh, I don't wanna pay that high price. So they go to the online retailers and they buy a cheap chameleon and we see them on the forums now coming back to the breeders asking advice as to how to save their chameleon um, that it, i mean what can i say don't cut corners when buying a chameleon get the one that's been taken care of and be willing to pay the money for that quality caution number two beware of people pushing cohabitation Cohabitation is keeping more than one chameleon in a cage. Anybody who tells you that you can keep two Jackson's chameleons in the same cage, avoid them. Jackson's chameleons are subtle in their communication, so it looks like they're getting along. But the fact is, they're stressed, and that stress leads to sickness. Do not keep chameleons in the same cage. Do not believe somebody if they sell you two chameleons that you can keep them in the cage. It doesn't matter. Male, female, 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 brother, sister. Uh, they've been raised together. They're a bonded pair. I've heard it all. Leave the expo with the same number of cages as chameleons. And caution number three, avoid picking a chameleon out of a group cage. What do I mean by that? Pet stores and expos, they'll often just get this green cage and they'll buy a whole bunch of chameleons wholesale and put them in this cage. So it's like you're picking a fish out of a barrel. This is an incredibly stressful situation for the chameleon. And what you've got going on in there is kind of a Hunger Games situation where the, the weaker ones start closing their eyes and start becoming passive. The stronger ones are climbing all over and and using up all of their energy and adrenaline just trying to stay alive. This is not a healthy situation. And if you see this, I would encourage you just turn around, walk away, don't even get involved. You, this is not the chameleon you want to start off with. If you insist and you fall in love with one of those chameleons and you got to take one home, pick the one that is the feistiest, the most active. Don't pick the passive ones. Those are the ones on their last legs. Now, once you get them home, yes, they could bounce back, but there's no way of knowing how far gone they are. So get the most alert and active one that's in the cage if you have to get from that situation. But once again, please find a breeder. It's your best chance at getting a strong start. And before you take the animal home, hold it in your hand. What you're doing is you want to check that all four of the feet are able to grab on you. It's, it's common for uh, chameleons to be pulled off of branches and so they break their foot. You need to make sure yours doesn't have a broken foot. Also check the tail, make sure it can wrap around your, a branch or your finger all the way to the tip. Make sure that the tail wasn't damaged. Uh, you can also see some internal damage by sickly black or yellow blotches on the skin that show what's going on inside. And check the eyes, 
make sure that they don't seem sunken in, that they're nice and full, that they're active, they're alert, they're not closing their eyes. A chameleon that closes its eyes is in trouble. Then you want to see if you can uh, have it open its mouth. This may be tricky. Jackson's chameleons don't always do this on command, but you can at least look around the mouth line uh, and see if you see any swelling. This is bad news. Now, obviously, there's a number of medical conditions that could be happening here, and the best thing to do is go to the chameleonacademy.com website, the medical section, and just read up on all the things that you could see. And to be honest, we have been seeing some pretty good quality in the Jackson's chameleons that have been around lately. But you never know how long that'll last because that is 100% dependent upon the people involved, and those people can change at any time. So continue your research, go into it intelligently, and know that you've got a community there that can support you. This video is part of a series specifically about Jackson's Chameleons, and when the next video is out, it'll be right there. General Chameleon video will be right there. Have a good day, and we'll see you next time.